the next the next person that I'm introducing is a uh, is a very very talented and interesting friend of mine that I met about a year ago, maybe a little bit less. Um, she's truly forward thinking, super creative. She has an amazing personality, super super detail oriented, methodical, a dedicated philanthropist. And uh, on top of all of that, she's a professional hairstylist um, and makeup artist. It's hair, hairstylist and makeup artist, right, Janelle? Just making sure I got it right. Okay, um, Janelle Hill, we have Janelle here to join us. Uh, take it away, give these people some insight. All right, so yeah, today we're gonna talk about uh, habituation um, and you know how it can just be a detriment, um, especially in the design process. Um, habituation is defined as a behavioral response to cream it that results from repeated stimulation and that does not involve sensory adaption, sensory fatigue, or motor fatigue. What does this mean? <laughs> it means we have evolved to use habituation to cut down on the amount of data we need to store in our brain to do everyday activities that are mundane and habitual. To easily and just like a computer cut down on the operating power needed to execute. There is a price to pay for generalization, though. Um, we lose sight of specifics and details. Um, this could be beneficial in certain instances, but in the area of design, it is not necessarily one of them. <laughs> Good design not only looks visually stimulating, it also solves a problem. You can't solve new problems from habituated ways of thinking. You have to look at them from a fresh, fun, fresh, unbiased uh, POV, point of view. Uh, innovations like Greta Thunberg's timeline website that helps visitors easily just like go through um, the story and the narrative of her brand in sequential order. Um, 3D elements give visitors uh, a unique experience that can help them stay on the website a lot longer um, to really explore and dig deeper. Uh, Plink, uh, they they have a, on their contact page an inverted uh, mouse over. So it's kind of like a, a game to find their QR code on their contact us page, like brilliant. It uh, Layering, um, layering is always fun. In the case of fashion designer Amanda Braga's site, uh, she has multiple image flashes that drop upon ro uh, rollover of the mouse. Like, again, just just tempting you to just dive deeper into the website and really understand the brand. Um, companies large and small come to Image Appeal to help, um, to help them create a web presence online that only not only represents their brand, but helps with the client acquisition and help them clientele customers they've already activated. Um, a specific brand in a specific industry with specific needs uh, that has clients with specific desires. With over 7 billion people on the planet um, and with just as many preferences and <laughs> distinctions, how do you generalize design for the masses? The answer is you don't. <laughs> you look at each person, each client as an individual. Um, the answer is you don't. You look at each project individually and if you're des designing for, as if you're designing for the first time, excuse me. You create an investigation process to identify the client's brand story and core needs. You stay objective and think from the POV of the client. You keep reading, you keep learning, you know, the evolution never stops. Um, and you stay open, US open, like you stay open yourself. Again, just really diving into the core needs of the client and what they need. Um, not just like what necessarily looks cool, you know, things want to, we want things to look cool, but we also want to really just be, um, you know, client focused, client need focused. Complacency can be dangerous, not only in design, but in business in general. On the onset of the pandemic, I was forced to close down my NYC based business and pivot online first, head first into e-commerce. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty much um, just even that right there, having to pivot into different industries, having to pivot within the industry you're in. If you're not staying open, if you don't have, you know, again, just a very, if you're not really tapping into your imagination, you're not going to be able 
to, you know, much less design a website, much less make it in business. So habituation is just something we definitely want to stay clear of. We want to just, again, be, um, you know, being proactive, whether you have to create space in the day to like meditate, um, really just stimulate your imagination. Um, it's cause it's from this imagination that you're going to have your best problem solving skills. Um, that's pretty much what I really wanted to get across. I think, I think I really hit the nail on the head with the point I was trying to bring home. <laughs> you know, that was incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sorry. We had a little technical difficulty there. <laughs> it's all right. Um, it, 2025 will be, we'll be done with all of those, you know, by, by, by year then. Um, exactly. Okay. Someone just shared your Instagram and complimented your looks and nice. said that you're super smart. Okay. <laughs> and now you have people, comp, 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 um, you have people protecting, defending you saying, look at her smart, not her looks. We have a, we have a, we have an online troll academy happening about you. Okay. You know, you That's started- fine. You know, um, life happens uh how can how can um okay we have robin how can i grow a business from 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 zero where we have um where we have a skill team but issues with the client can you give me some insight can you repeat it one more time for me um it's not written the best but essentially what it's saying is is if we're having issues we have a great team we have a skill team we have a dedicated team but the client is an asshole what do we do um you know you you really just for as corny as it sounds you have to kill clients with kindness um and then after that you know give it up to the universe it's great if you put the ball in their court and if they seem like they're not happy be like you know what the ball's in your court now what can i do to make you happy do you see what i'm saying so it's an open-ended question and it's like you can't really go wrong after that because you're really putting the ball in their court again and asking them you know, you're not making it up. You're not pulling this out of your whatever. You're literally coming to them and be like, you know what? I've tried to please you. Um, I'm going to put the ball on your court. You tell me how we can move forward and what I can do to correct course, rectify, and, you know, move forward. That never so fails. You catch more bees with honey. Huh? You catch more bees with honey. There you go. I don't there know what you Okay. Well, uh, that was Jan- that was Janelle Hill. Thank you so much for coming. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to speak to us today. It was amazing to hear from you. Awesome. I had a blast. No habituation. Be creative. Be open. Be creative. And open. That's the message. Thank you so much, Janelle. I uh, really hope to have you at our next event. Thank you. Look forward for the rest of the event. It's been a blast right. so far. <laughs>